I'm the Magpie, and welcome to the second follow-up video... With this? The Cosio DM100. But first, I wanna say, don't mind the ketchup. And also, there's already a ton of sounds from this one on magpiestuff.com, and if I succeed, which I'm likely to do, then you're gonna understand how cool the sounds are on magpiestuff.com that I'm going to put there. But yeah, what I am intending to do is flip it, flip it. First of all, like this. But then we are inside. Because in the first Fallout video, I separated the outputs. I separated the keyboards. I should say. So I have the lower keyboard and the accompaniments on one jack and then the upper keyboard with the sampling capabilities on the other jack. And it was really easy to do working right over here. But yeah, maybe you can see these two circles here. These two circles are circling the clock source. As. So it's two of them. One for this chip and one for this chip. My assumption then being that this is the upper keyboard, this is the lower keyboard. But if we oh, open this up, we can see here the two clock sources. That one and that one. There are like three types of clock sources that are really common in these old types of keyboards. Uh, two of them being really easy to swap out one of them being not, and that is this one, <laughs> at least, like, in my opinion and experience, because it's got quite a few pins that you gotta figure out, but, I mean, it's primarily because I don't personally have that much experience with it, but if it were to have had one of these, for example, but these can come in all shapes and sizes, this is a tiny little, little crystal here. <laughs> And now it's gone. But yeah, with these crystals, they have two pins, two legs uh, that they're utilizing. So all you gotta do is you gotta cut one of them. It's like one of those Mission Impossible bump type situations. Actually, you got two legs, and you gotta figure out which one to cut. And then you just do that, and then you replace it with an oscillator of your picking. Preferably one where you can go lower and faster in speed, which is really easy to do with an LTC 1799, which I happen to have here on a tiny little board. Straight from circuitbenders.com.uk, I think, which I can link in the description, and they have like a glorious blog-ish type post on this one, and how to do this type of modification. And they also list the three kinds, the crystal that I showed you, and then the ceramic uh, resonator, which is another one that also usually have two pins. You find it, for example, in the CAD keyboard, which is here somewhere, or at least I did in my CAD keyboard. So that one also super easy to replace. You just... Do it? And then this type. So, uh, all, like, as long as it's through hole, it's kind of super straightforward per usual. But yeah, if we unplug this really cool thing that I 3D printed, uh, we can have a listen to this one. We can actually uplift this one. You see? We can tune it, so that's uh, convenient. However, I am not sure what this part here is. Yeah, that might also be a, a clock. But yeah, lower keyboard on that one, upper keyboard on that one. And I don't even intend to touch that one. I think the upper keyboard is perfect as it is with the sampling capabilities and going lo-fi as such. But if I swap that one and mess around with the lower keyboard, and then sample that and mess it up even more? Can you even imagine? If not, then I will prove it, I guess. But yeah, first we need to figure out how to do it. Because uh, this one has one wire coming here from one of these that I put there. And this one is the clock out on this little oscillator here. So I need to attach this one 
and detach that one. And I want to make it so I can switch between. That is my goal. Uh, but I also got a really cool comment, which was, haha, you are funny. Something, something, I don't know. Maybe it's two comments smashed together now. But putting all the batteries on the upper keyboards in my previous videos to sort of latch the upper keyboard, I could perhaps put switches on the entirety of the upper keyboard. I will have a row of switches so I can pick which keys are, are looping. That could be really cool. So I intend to do that as well. And then this one is gonna be like my ultimate DM100. Yeah. I think I'm gonna start with this and then we're gonna move over down here and we're gonna see how possible that is. We actually have all of these diodes here, which I do believe corresponds to all the individual keys, most likely. But yeah. This one first. So if we look on the other side, I have circled it and we can follow the traces here and see that there's some pins that doesn't really seem to do very much at all. And then there's one pin in between two other pins that doesn't seem to be even soldered. But then we have these two pins right next to the one in the middle. They go right over here to those pins, like from here two here. We then look at the other side. I think these are just jumpers. So it jumps over, whoops, boom, and it goes into the ship. Maybe I can just cut the upper jumper here and put this one there. It's a, it's, it's quite the maybe, but it, it's at least a maybe. And I, a, a maybe is all I need. So if we just, boom. So now the pin closest to the ship, that's where we're gonna attach this one and then test it. And we'll, yeah, we'll see. May, did this work? Was it this simple? Who knows? You will, soon. We turn on. And it doesn't work. What if we cut the other ones then? Like so. What? <laughs> Not expected result. I'm slowly but surely getting somewhere, actually. Uh, let me start by showing you this button. Because I need an actual mechanical kill switch, so to speak for the battery power, because if I just turn it on enough, it still stores power, so like power is still flowing through it. Which is kind of weird, but uh, I mean, it just is what it is. So whenever I go too low on the clock speed on the CPU, it starts acting very erratic, uh, which is kind of cool. But yeah, what I have discovered that I kind of have to do is, oh man, it is a, it is, there's a lot to go through here, actually. I have circled the blue one and the pink one. And actually what happened is this trace right here, which is just coming from the upper part of the blue one. You can think of the blue one as being two sections. But yeah, that trace going to the CPU actually completely broke, so. That was not very nice, but I was able to <laughs> put a wire there. Now and that wire goes to a switch because that wire is essentially the other point next to the yellow. It's just connected. So the yellow then also comes back from the switch together with the gray wires that it, those are on one channel because this is like a double switch. So. This switch is now just those two jumpers because what I noticed, I'm actually kind of getting to it. What I noticed is that I have to replace both of the sides of the coil at the same time. Seemingly, that is as far as I have solved these problems, the one and only solution so far that seems to actually work. So I need to have two LTC 1799s. So we have one here and we have one uh, down here. These are not the permanent placements. <laughs> this is not how it's gonna look when I'm done. Well, yeah, so I now have a stereo pot so I can clock down two chips at the same time. So a huge thank you to DDC who 
has been very friendly and helped me <laughs> quite a lot through solving all of this. He did all the math for me based on the data sheets and doing those calculations. We have ended up in a situation where it doesn't just, as soon as you move the part, it, it stops working. But I switch on the switch. And as you might have picked up, now we're faster than original. And I can go down. I've circled the pink thing here, and the pink thing was that blue thing that's gonna be really hard to show you. Here, underneath the coil, and that is a ceramic resonator, seemingly. So I tried replacing that as a clock source, because it also goes into the CPU, and what that seemingly controls is just the tempo of the drums and the accompaniment. So I was able to clock down the drums, like the BPM of the drums. Uh, anyways, this PCB here, you know, it's a cool transparent PCB. It's the upper keyboard, all the keys. And I think, yeah. I can just touch a feely on one of these and then one of the diodes. So I think it's very, gonna be super easy to put switches there. One switch per key equals a gazillion more soul rings. Let's do it! It took quite a while, actually. It's now a couple of days later. Just hard work for, uh, yeah, two primary reasons. First being this whole setup, which is glorious. I'm gonna show you in a second, but yeah, as you can see, I made it super cute. I made it so it's just literally just this keyboard here with all of the white keys and all of the black keys. So I can pick, yeah, literally whichever key I want. And you can do four, max. So no more batteries. But yeah, what made it take way more time than I thought it would is that it's all divided by four. So these four are like these four, but on the inside, those four diodes, which is, yeah, where the signal goes, goes to one jumper. And then these four goes to another jumper, like it's different pathways or whatever. So I like, I soldered maybe the first four and the second four and I like picked which wires to go with. And then it was like, ba ba like, oh, I gotta move that over there. And then where's that supposed to go? Like the, the math with all of these fours and trying to figure out because it wasn't like consistent from, from <laughs> the, the, this direction at all. So whew, that took a lot of time, but now when I've done it, I'm really satisfied with it. And I think it's a glorious modification to do to any of these Casio sampler keyboards in the SK series because you can have it latch on and especially by just sampling something and putting it in loop mode. 
So just continue, continuously looping. Second reason why it took a long time is because I realized when I had put everything back together that, of course, I have to tune the lower keyboard. But it turns out that, and this is kind of weird and finicky and interesting, but with the wiring going from a ship somewhere around, I think quite literally the center of the keyboard, the, with wires from the original coil going all the way to this pot, or switch, I should say, and back, that distance made it so I cannot, on the original coil, I cannot tune it back to a C being a C. So now a C is a G, I think. Uh, yeah, kinda. Not, not really in tune, but that is also really interesting that when I'm like bending the PCB like to put it back to screw it in That's different from when I'm having it up and screwing on the coil like you can hear it <laughs> Detune when you bend down the PCB to put it in place. So really really fascinating stuff uh, Also, I realized that of course this one has tuning parts on it somewhere around here. I don't know if I can simply replace the value on, on that potentiometer and uh, maybe go through like I'm at a point at the moment where it works so I don't want to mess it up more but interestingly enough when I tuned it like after I had tuned it I cannot switch back to circuit bend mode and having it work I can only <laughs> start it up in circuit bend mode But, <laughs> just as a, I guess a silver lining, it's super clean with the bend pot. Like it's never getting crazy glitchy or anything. It's just quite literally a tune pot. No. So I wanna see if I can tweak it to make it go at least a bit more wild and crazy. I am able to get it into a messed up mode from time to time when switching back and forth. First try! Oh no. Sometimes it goes on forever in a really weird glitched out mode of doing, I don't know, like playing. <laughs> It's like a, quite literally speak of the devil. <laughs> Just, <you know. laughs> One more try of getting it into glitch mode, then I'm gonna show you another thing that is w what's really making this one amazing for a pitch modification like this. Uh, and I'm not kidding, by far, in my opinion, one of the coolest types of units to do it with uh, for a really peculiar reason that it, Hint, hint, I actually showed earlier in the video. So if you can take a guess now, maybe you understand why. Maybe you even commented earlier when I pointed out the very specific, peculiar thing. What makes it really cool with this keyboard in particular, that is something that I've never come across before in my life, for circuit bending specifically, is that we have that separated clock source, a ceramic resonator for the BPM of the drums and accompaniment, but controlling the pitch and everything of that sort is the, the, the main clock for the CPU, which is what I have circuit bent. So, I can go lower in pitch, which is a very common thing to do when circuit bending, but it won't affect the tempo of the accompaniment or the drums, which is one of the caveats per usual when circuit bending, that when you go lower in pitch, it also goes lower in speed. Like, for example, with this generic circuit bend keyboard. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, as you can hear, it just lowers the tempo of everything that is going on. But with this one, if we start the drums. It just stays in the same tempo. Which is really cool. I wonder with this one. <laughs> that is so interesting. I'm gonna put that in the <laughs> sample back. Sorry. Sorry. this done of course I want to be able to switch back here without it just completely dying that is a bit of a bummer I should be able to fix it with just changing the value of the potentiometer anyways uh, there is a bunch of trickery going on which is kind of fun uh, and super annoying at the same time but I'm gonna switch this stereo part into a different value of the stereo part and tweaking on the tiny part on the little thing to be able to go both to the really high speed where it's original and even higher and also down to this really low because it can actually go really really low yeah I'm gonna fix all of that and then I will record uh, making a hundred songs with the DM100 as a grand finale. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be amazing. And you're, they're all gonna be on magpiestuff.com for you to download as well and do whatever you want with because they're only gonna be song starters probably. We'll, 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 we'll see. Uh, but there might be a couple of videos in between. I have a lot of things lined up. So, so let me now leave you. Do do do. <laughs> hmm.